This is Tim Rogers with Dodgers 2080. I have with me left-handed pitcher Luke Fox, 2023 drafty. even though ChatGPT said it was 2022. Uh, <laughs> Luke, thank you for coming uh, coming aboard and uh, welcome to, well, a little late, Rancho Cucamonga into the Dodgers organization. Thank right? you. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, so... Um, the guy that I think I told you is the guy that um, told me about you was the guy that signed you. That's right. It was, uh, it was uh, Jonah Rosenthal. And so um, Jonah said, Luke's a great guy. Keep your eye on him. So what do we do? We keep an eye on this guy. So tell us a little bit about um, just what you've seen this season. Then we'll, we'll go back, you know, into some, some of your history a little bit. So what have you been experiencing so far yeah, starting in spring training? Sure. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I was still kind of finishing up my rehab in spring training. I uh, stayed there through extended. Um, and really, this year for me has just kind of been getting back to pitching and pitching on a team and being a part of a team and being an active contributor. Um, and so that's been the biggest thing, um, all while developing and learning all that there is to learn from, you know, these great minds and the Dodgers are unbelievable with the player development so it's, it's, it's been a lot it's been a lot of absorbing information and then doing my best to you know make it happen out there on the mound yeah so when he says rehab um, he had Tommy John surgery yes, um, you were what injured in what 2022 is that what it was that's right yeah surgery in November of 2022 okay and so you pit when did you start did you start getting feeling injured in 2022 like in during the season because you were with duke yeah. and that was your sophomore year yes sir okay yes sir yeah so injury started that sophomore year um like april may ish yeah and so even that you so you didn't pitch in 2023 but the dodgers still drafted you which is cool and then you, as a junior, you had the option of going back to school, too. So, obviously, the Dodgers did enough to say, hey, come on, come over here. I, I, I'm, I'm going to just maybe put a couple words in your mouth. Not only are we going to make sure to take care of you a little bit here and there with the good stuff, but also look at our record. Look what we can do for you versus if you go back in the draft, you might get drafted by a team that is not so good at developing pitchers. Any thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's right. I, I remember I had a, I was pretty torn on going back to school yeah. or coming here. Um, I felt like there was still a lot I had to give to the school, but uh, I had a Zoom call. Will Rhymes, Rob Hill got on there, and I, I got to be honest, they, they blew me away, man. It was <laughs> unbelievable. And I was like, you know what, I, I got to be a part of this as soon as I possibly can, and here we are. Well, if those guys weren't scouts and all that type of stuff, they'd probably be salespeople, <laughs> with, you know, <laughs> selling insurance or something like that. Uh, tell us about Duke a bit. So um, what made, what had you go to Duke? Because you were from Wisconsin. Wisconsin, yeah. So. Um, Josh Jordan, the recruiting coordinator at the time, mm -hmm. saw me actually playing in a tournament uh, at Vanderbilt, which was pretty okay. cool. Um, and what it eventually came down to me was just the combination of academics and athletics at Duke is, you know, second to none. And I really valued that education. And I also really wanted to be a part of what Coach Pollard was building mm -hmm. at that time. Um, just an up and coming program and, you know, Really happy with that choice. Really happy with my experience. Yeah, and if you look at your bio, it says pitcher and outfielder. I don't know if you if you notice that. Yeah. It looks like you didn't get a shot though in the outfield, did you? No, no. They 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 kept me from live abs, but I was a full time BP hitter my freshman year, <laughs> which honestly was a great time. I really enjoyed that. Dominance it, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. You bat bat lefty or righty? Lefty. You're lefty. Mm -hmm. So you're lefty all the way. Yeah, I actually switch it till oh, my okay. sophomore year of high school, but ended up just being a lefty all right okay so you're from wisconsin yeah there is a player on the los angeles dodgers named gavin lux who's also from wisconsin he has a very controversial thing in his life i don't know if you know what that is but he roots for the chicago bears okay so he's he's wrong Heinous, that's what we would say. <laughs> I think out of what, I don't know how many people are in Wisconsin, but he might be the only one, and they might kick him out pretty soon, it sounds like. Uh, and it's good to see Gavin Lux is, is you know, doing well. Um, so this season, uh, you're, you know, recovering from Tommy John, um, getting back into playing baseball. I mean, you had, hadn't been in a game since 2022, I guess. Yeah, yeah. May of 2022. Ooh. So when you um, were signed last year, 
Um, did you just go straight to Arizona and kind of hang out and get loose and or get, get work on everything? Yeah, I mean, it was basically we got to Arizona. We had our orientation week, mm -hmm. um, almost camp set up with all the guys, get to know each other, get to know the staff. And then it was right into the rehab programming where they kind of met me where I was at. And then it was let's work from there and plan this thing out. Yeah, and so right now you're um, starting games, but you're obviously you're being limited in your innings. Yes, sir. Um, is it is it innings or pitch count that they're monitoring with you? Pitch count. Pitch count. Okay. And you said you hit 35 last night. Yes, sir. Yeah. Three Ks. Right. <laughs> so um, tell us more. You know, kind of to go into the little kind of the nerdy stuff, uh, but. Tell us about your your the pitches you you throw. What's effective? Yeah, and you know, for some of us velocity junkies, how hard do those uh, do each of those pitches approximately go? Sure. Yeah. So four seam, pretty standard. But actually, something I changed from college to now through rehab was I ended up tucking the thumb on that um, to help create a little more spin efficiency, um, which okay. has helped me create a little more lift. Um, so I mean, it's been for the most part, I've been 92, 96 touch of seven but again you know the variability with coming off surgery has right. been interesting you know to traverse those waters but um, and then on top of that something I added with the Dodgers this past spring um, was a shorter cutter slider uh, that's been more like 88 to 90 okay um, and then change up circle change kind of pull both fingers off as much as I can that's been a little more like Honestly, trying to throw that a little slower. It's been yeah. like 87, 90 as well. What do you do? You, do you tuck it really in tight and then keep everything loose? Yeah, or? I kind of bury it. And then, so it's a circle. Yep. And then I basically just pull. It's a four seam circle change. And then I pull that middle finger over as far as okay. I can. Um, and just kind of feel it come off these fingers. So when, um, just kind of a side note about the change up. Yeah. Um, my, I have a young uh, son. He's older now, okay. but you know, going through baseball and he's a lefty and all that stuff. And the, when the, one of the coaches he had is that the changeup is just one of absolutely the toughest pitches to throw. I mean, you can ask Clayton Kershaw; he's still trying to learn how to throw yeah. it. That's right. At the same time, if you master it like Trevor Hoffman did, it put him in the Hall of Fame. By the end of his career, he barely even threw hard, but everything was a lot of changeups, and they were still swinging at stuff that was in the dirt. So. I mean, what percentage-wise, how many um, change-ups in terms of percentage do you throw? It's been about, and the hard part too is, you know, with these shorter outings, yeah. is those, oh, yeah. those percentages just go like this, um, <laughs> outing to outing. So I think it's somewhere around 15 to 20 right now. Yeah. Um, but really, it kind of just depends on the game plan, um, you know, maybe what I'm working on that given week. Yeah, and I'm a, talking, you know, having done this a little bit, it seems like the game plans aren't necessarily, uh, this is gonna sound wrong, it always does when I say this, it's not geared towards, hey, it's all about winning, it's about development, and winning on the same path. So, I mean, your plan might be, you could say this is wrong, it might be, hey, we really have noticed in the metrics that he needs to work on his four seam to get a little extra run. So we're going to throw a few extra. We kind of don't care about the, the game as much just to get that development type thing. Do you see that happen a little bit? I'd say a little bit, yeah. I mean, I, I guess the way I'd word it is more that we're always going to gear our game plan more towards our strengths yes. than you know, necessarily their weaknesses. It's not going to be, hey, we really need to avoid this guy's, you know, maybe he hits the ball really well inside. Yeah. But if I throw whatever pitch really well inside and have good results, I'm going to lean towards my strengths rather than avoiding his, if that makes sense. Oh, it make, it make, that, that's really very great insight because it's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense because – at the end of the day, yes, these games, every game, everyone likes to win, for sure. But at the same time, it's about developing, getting better, because there's a ballpark down the 10 there. I think a lot of us would like to right. see you at <laughs> as soon as possible. Have you had a chance to go to Dodger Stadium yet? I have not, no. Yeah, coming here to Rancho was my first time just being in California. Oh, in general, okay. So, yeah. Okay, so now we got to ask some California questions a little bit, and there's some bias going to come in. So you were in Arizona, yep. and you've been in California. Have, do you have enough information to make the important call of In-N-Out versus Whataburger? I don't. 
Have you eaten either one of them? I haven't been to either one of them. So. Well, as my friend Clint, Pas is, it, is Clint Pasias, my my well, good friend, formerly of Dodgers Nation, now with all <laughs> all Dodgers podcasts, would say, "Bruh." <laughs> but at the same time, you're in good shape, and some of us aren't. <laughs> so, um, it, speaking of that, so I hear such good things about the way they take care of you guys here at Rancho. Um, Peter Hubeck, who I interviewed a couple about a month ago talked about that he's a great lakes now but just about how you guys are taken care of really well it seems like um do you talk about you know what they do what kind of the routine is like when you go to the ballpark there what do you what do you get here do you get lunch do you get you know yeah I, the food's the biggest thing for sure i mean lunch every day when we show up to the ballpark mm -hmm. shakes and a snack pre-game and then yeah. dinner every night so right. you know they're making sure we're taken care of and it's all it's the quality at the end of the day that really is the difference maker and, and, and to be honest folks that really does matter the more i look into it <laughs> hopefully no seed oils in there right i, mean, <laughs> I don't want <laughs> that's the latest right it's like hey seed oils i, I don't know who knows now who cares um well i guess i should <laughs> but um so looking at, and I, just to jump forward you know, season's gonna end up. It's gonna. We're in the playoffs next month, no. and and hopefully you're gonna have a big part of that. But do you have like, have you thought about where you're gonna go in the off season? What you're gonna do? Your kind of schedule. I mean, you do have Wisconsin, and you've got. Then I'm sure there's Arizona. What are you gonna What are you gonna looking at doing maybe this off season? I'm actually looking to go back to school um, oh, nice. and get another semester. I've got two semesters left before I graduate, so I'm looking to go train there. Um, and also get another semester of school out of the way. Uh, awesome. What, what's your What's your degree? Evolutionary anthropology. Okay, smart guy. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm I'm a software architect, and I'm still going. That's eh, a smart guy. <laughs> uh, I said the same thing about you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Um, what What got you into that? I mean, let's go there. Yeah, I, I'd say it's a combination of a lot of different things, really. Um, but I guess what it comes down to is. It's the closest thing Duke has to kinesiology, okay. and I also it get, also gives me access to a lot of the biology classes that I came in really interested in. Okay. So I felt, you know, just playing baseball that I couldn't really put the time that I would have liked to if I were to be a biology major as I initially planned. Hmm. Uh, but then I also saw this route with Evan, um, where I could take a lot of classes oriented more towards the human body mm -hmm. and how we work yeah and a lot of things i've already learned are applicable to what we do on the field and in between day to day and so that's it's been really cool being able to make those connections and it it makes that's it makes the studying a lot easier because i can say okay this is important here's where yeah. i need to know it here's where i can apply it things like that i mean th that's as a pitcher and you know i know the dodgers are they're taking video all over the place and you're having to probably hopefully you don't have to watch too much of yourself but <laughs> someone's watching every little move that you're doing on the mound and to be, for yourself to go you know especially if something doesn't feel right and just to be able to go not not that you're going to be a quote p you know doctor md but maybe you are but just going hey something is not right maybe maybe you'll have a little extra knowledge that someone else would it makes the communication a lot easier oh yeah especially through the rehab process oh really i mean just being able to specify in certain places or in, you know certain movements what i feel is really helpful i think that's see that that's really good because then i mean you're you're going to be able to take it to a different level in terms of coaching yourself during the off season when maybe not everyone's floating around or even you know you don't want to be in Arizona all, all winter you want to be able to go and do other things and get some other 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 opinions and some of it would be yourself to, to bounce it off of and the hard part's just not getting too caught up in the details <laughs> Well, that's for sure. That's um, sometimes that's where those right. rabbit holes of details are, are are torture. So you, so you're hoping then what, graduate in 2025? Then maybe. Ideally, I mean, it's hard because I'm I'm not able to take the online classes that I'd need to complete mm -hmm. my major through Duke. I have to be in person on campus, um, and so I'm already kind of pushing the envelope a little bit here with where our season ends and when school starts. Yeah. So depending on you know where I end up and what the Dodgers are going to want me to do off season to off season. We'll see. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, 
See, we got smarter. The Dodgers do the things they look for. I know one of them is intelligence. Also, just good people. I mean, I think we, you probably, you see that right. if you come into the That's organization. Right yeah, I mean, I was um, talking to, to some other guys earlier and, um, you know, I, I sometimes I get blessed to get a press pass at Dodger Stadium. It doesn't happen much, but you know what? A lot of those guys that I covered back at Rancho back in the day, they still come over, they say hello, Hey, you know, just that it is kind of it's a, that's quality of character. The Michaels right. Bros. I know Miggy Vargas is gone now, but he would be that way. James Altman, Pepio when he was here, all sorts of you know, all those guys. Um, Gavin Stone, um, you know, to speak of it, you know, Gavin Stone in 2021 was the opening day starter here, and now look at him, and he made his yeah. debut last year within a little more than two years of that. Yes, sir. Um, Edgardo Enrique is knocking on the door, so my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's. I'll tell you a story offline. Um, it's a good story, but nothing bad against Edgardo. It would just it would too, be too long. Um, and then you know, I guess uh, Wyatt Crowell. Who did he? Now is he also going? Is he? Would he? Did he also have Tommy John? Is that he my did. understanding? Yeah, we went through the majority of the process together. Actually. Okay. Yeah. And so he's maybe a little ahead of you in terms of pitch count. Does it seem like maybe? I think it's just a development thing, okay. honestly. Um, yeah. He was in a great position to move up. Um, yeah. He go, gets to he go goes, take advantage of it. Yeah, very. There's, I mean, it's like, oh, you're both left handed, both going through the same thing, same draft, all that. I mean, it's kind of cool. And it's good to see, as a left hander myself, um, it's good to see the Dodgers finally getting some left handers because <laughs> that prospect chart would be dominated with the top 30. We'd be like 12 or 13 right handed starters. Now it's time to get some lefties. Right. You're yeah. gonna get, you got to get yourself up there soon. You got Wyatt. You got what's a uh, Ferris is in there. Yeah. Bruns is going to be back in. He's, mm -hmm. I, Maddox was here. Great kid. Um, cop. So lefties galore. And I like That's to right. see yeah. it. Well, Luke. We appreciate you, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate you getting yeah. a chance to talk to you, yeah, man. Yeah, thanks for talking with me. All right, man. Thanks again. Appreciate it. All right, man. Thank you very much. This is Tim Rogers with Dodgers 2080 with Luke Fox. Thank you very much. God bless and go Dodgers.